Hi, my name is Sarah Kira. I've been married to Jared for 15 years and we have five kiddos. Elliot is 12, Shiloh is 10, Tobin is 8, Reagan is 6, and Asher is 4. We've been part of Lighthouse for 17 years and feel so blessed to have a church family here. I'm excited to share how God has been faithful to our family today. I'm only just starting to think about what faithful stewardship looks like in my life. I've heard messages and read the command to steward well what has never been mine. I know in my head that I am an undeserving sinner in need of mercy, that all that I have is God's and is given to me as a gift of His grace. But it's one thing to know these things, and it's another to really live these ideas out. I honestly don't know that I've been intentionally stewarding family. I feel like most days just fly by, and it is completely by God's grace that I see fruit in my own life, in my marriage, and in my kids' lives. But God has been faithful. When I have been indifferent to God, when I have lacked in prayer and humility, when I have failed in my role as a wife and mom, that's when all these holes have been filled by God's grace. Understanding my call to steward my family well means trying to be faithful with what God has given to me in family and marriage. I'll start with what God has given to me. He has given me an undeserved grace and faith in who He is, and He has blessed me with a family to love and serve. He has given me a husband who loves me, daily sacrifices for me, cares for me, and leads me well. He has given me five children who are fun-loving, kind, generous, and mostly obedient. I have what some would call a picture-perfect family. So it is hard to admit to the moments when I act like I am not thankful for the family I have. When I struggle to steward family well, it comes back to a battle with discontentment, a hard attitude of not being thankful for what God has given to me. I'm quick to grumble about the mountains of laundry or taking another dirty sock from the dog's mouth. I grumble about cooking and more about all the dishes. I grumble when things are not done my way. I grumble when kids bicker with each other or when they don't obey completely, quickly, or with a cheerful attitude. I grumble when I feel like I don't have time for myself or that I am unappreciated. In these grumblings, I know that I am being selfish. I am bitter as I consider myself a servant and I am prideful as I think I deserve a different role. But God has been faithful to not leave my heart grumbling and discontent. First, God has given me an identity in Christ. Trusting that my identity is in Christ changes how I steward my role as a wife and mom. Over the years, I have struggled with feeling like my identity was lost as I've been called to more responsibilities at home and less things to do outside of home. I'm not a teacher anymore. I don't have time for hobbies or personal interests. Even now, a lot of my time is spent doing, well, nothing. It is time that I can't really document as productive, and it barely qualifies as an item to be crossed off a list. I know that I shouldn't, but this bothers me. I tend to think productivity is accomplishing something, to be able to say that I finished something, but it's not like that. Much of my day-to-day -day is really unseen, and the things I do are small. I've asked God, what about me as a person, aside from being a wife to Jared and mama to these kids? What about the gifts and skills God has given to me? How should I steward those things? I'll admit to wrestling with these questions over the years, but each time I ask, God reminds me that my identity is not about what I do for work, what things I do to occupy my time, or even the people I spend time with. My identity is that I am a sinner who has been forgiven and I have a relationship with a God who cares for me. Rather than thinking of my energy and time as my own, I can see that they are God's. I can be content in who I am in Christ. Our accountability group is reading the book Beholding and Becoming by Ruth Chu Simons. I was so blessed by her encouragement. She writes, Friends, what we choose to behold in the midst of tedious tasks and unrelenting responsibilities in the day-to-day, -day, and what we choose to believe about the God who puts us there, determines whether we see the dirt daily reappearance of dirty dishes and unwashed clothes as a purposeful provision or a dirty nuisance. When we look to the God who provides the blessings and the work that accompanies them, today's tasks become opportunities to praise, to give thanks, and to remember the one we aim to please. Maybe your challenge each day is not dishes and laundry, but we all have at least one task that is hard to steward, and we can be encouraged to look to God for help. 
I'm reminded again that it's not about me or the things I do, but about extending the same grace I've been shown to my family. I can try to be the one given one talent, one small thing to do, one book to read out loud, one five minute conversation, one load of laundry, and to do that one thing well with joy and for God's glory when I remember that my identity is in Christ. Second, God has given me an example in Christ to help me steward my family. God has been teaching me that to be a servant is my calling. It's not something that I should be bitter or resentful about. Jesus came as a servant to the world, humbly submitting himself to God's story for his life. He submitted himself to serve me by dying for me and for my sins. So why should I think of my own calling as anything different? Remembering what Jesus has done to serve me helps me see being a servant an honor and opportunity to glorify God. Instead of bitterly considering myself a servant, I can gratefully consider myself a servant. I love Paul's encouragement in Philippians 2. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not, look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. I love this passage because it reminds me that even Jesus humbly submitted to God's will and purpose for him. I feel hopeful when I remember that being a servant is being like Jesus. This passage was so helpful to me in the early days of marriage when my younger self was looking at marriage as a way to be served rather than to give. Making it a priority to steward my marriage and serve my husband is something I am still working on in so many ways. While I agree with the idea of the spouse before the kids, in application this is hard. The needs of the kids are always right in front of me and usually require more immediate attention. When the kids were little, they needed so much to be fed, dressed, changed, wiped, bandaged, buckled, carried, bathed, read to, and generally cared for. It was so easy to see those as real needs that needed a mom's attention. So it was a challenge for me to not immediately hand over a kid and ask for help the second Jared came home from work. I really had to work at not being angry if he needed a little time to relax on weekends. I had to try to see his needs as just as real. With the kids older now, some of those basic things they can do for themselves, but now they are busier and our family is busier. They still need meals, clean clothes, and to be driven places. I'm more tired and have to try to have energy to spend time with Jared at night after the kids go to sleep. I think we would agree that it's still the kids' needs that take our time and attention away from our marriage. So needless to say, this is our current season of life in an area we are very much still working on. One thing God has been teaching me these last few years is that love is not a transaction. It's easy for me to keep a balance sheet in my mind where I list everything I do for the family and I think Jared's half should be as full as mine. Or that if I do something for him, I expect to be given something in return. When I stop and truly consider my thoughts, words, and behaviors, a selfish side of me is revealed. God has shown me how in these moments, I'm not thinking of myself as a wife that is, suit is a suitable helper to my husband. I'm not looking out for his best interests, but my own. I'm not preferring him, trying to meet his needs, or helping him know God better. These moments and seasons of failure as a wife hurt more than failures in parenting, but here there's been so much grace too. Every time we pray for a struggling marriage, I'm reminded to be thankful that Jared and I still enjoy each other's company and have fun together. I can be excited for date nights and spending time with him. We serve our family and others together. He likes that we balance our responsibilities according to our strengths and we trust each other in how those things are handled. For sure, there's room to grow. We are still working on praying together and growing in prayer in general. I still fight anger in the times it's not my way. I still struggle in my role to serve, help, and bless. This is an area God is still working on in me, but I'm thankful for Christ's example of a servant heart. Third, God's faithfulness has given me hope to steward in every season and every day. When my heart fights what God has given to me for that moment, day, week, or season, I can remember that God has created each of the people in my life, and I can serve with joy and hope. 
I remember having the hardest time nursing my first baby, crying with the pain and frustration of not knowing what even animal mothers could do. I felt so helpless, and I kind of dreaded having to feed every two hours. I had this little life in my care, yet I was helpless to do what she needed. We both needed God's help, and I just remember praying for God to please give me the strength to provide. Of course, looking back, that was a relatively short season, maybe just a few months. But it was so key to me seeing my need for God to help me steward the gift He had given me. One truth that has helped me is remembering that God is the one who gave me everything, so He is the one who will give me the strength to take care of what He has given to me. Lamentations 3 talks about having hope because the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases and His mercies are new every morning. Because God has been faithful, I can try to be faithful with what He has given to me. When I feel like it's too much, too hard, or too boring, I try to remember that His mercies are enough for the day, that He was faithful yesterday, so He will help me for today. So practically speaking, what does it look like to steward family? I think it's important for us to remember that every family is different. How stewardship looks in your life and family might look very different than mine. I hope you don't see this as a recipe or a one-size-fits-all for stewardship in any way. The decisions we have made for our family might not work for yours, but what I'm hoping is to just share some of the things we have considered for our family. As a wife and mom, I've seen God's grace in stewarding the big and small, the everyday, and the entire seasons of life. In the big picture, the season that is parenting is going to be so short. The time that God has given to me to train, instruct, and shepherd my kids is just not that long. We want our kids to know God, to know Jesus as their own Lord and Savior, and for them to live a life that shines as a light to others. A lot of the day-to-day -day choices we've made come down to asking if that choice is a good way for our kids to love God or love others better. For many years, the most significant daily trial I faced was discipline of the kids. For the season of their lives that was being a toddler, I felt like there was so much correction to do. There was a long season of just teaching our kids about obedience, safety, being loving to others, and about how God has put them under our authority. My kids tested my patience by refusing to listen, not obeying if I asked them to help clean up, not wanting to stop doing something they liked, having a tantrum on the floor if they didn't have their way, not sharing with their sibling, and not being friendly to others. Discipline was one of those things I would wish I could just not do. How much easier it would be to just let my child have what they wanted rather than deal with the tantrum and then go through the discipline process, then repeat many times and days for months. But looking back, I see how the season was an opportunity to steward well each child's toddler heart. When their heart wanted their way, that toy, that type of attention, what was selfish, greedy, or ungrateful, it was an opportunity for me to point them to Christ to tell them about their wrong behavior, how that is called sin and it hurt God, and to show them the consequence of their sin, but also to tell them that God could forgive them if they asked and He could help them to change. Sometimes I was frustrated and angry myself, so having to discipline my child forced me to calm down and pray. I can't count how many times we prayed the same prayer. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Sorry that I was selfish. Please forgive me and help me be thankful and loving. Amen. So many times I wondered what I was doing, praying the same prayer again and again. Looking back, I can see that it was a season for stewarding my child's heart to be faithful to point my child to God through discipline. Even though I couldn't always be sure that discipline worked because I didn't see a change in behavior, I could trust that God would be faithful to continue the good work He had started, and He could change both our hearts in His own perfect timing. As the kids have gotten older, instruction in the Lord has looked different. They still sin, but now it's more of a conversation. When things come up, I don't necessarily need to punish because often they know the consequences. There are still fights over things, blame shifting for lack of responsibility, unkind words, and selfish attitudes. Many of the heart attitudes are the same ones we addressed when they were younger, so they are familiar when we talk about using gentle words, being kind and generous to one another, and sacrificing our preferences. When people grumble in their chores, we talk about having a thankful attitude and a heart that wants to serve. One thing we do is call our chores DOTS, which stands for Daily Opportunity to Serve. It's a reminder for all of us that it's our chance to serve the family for the day. 
Now that they're older, it's also nice because we can read passages together, and the kids know that these are God's words that encourage. These conversations don't always happen, or they don't always go well. There have been so many times I have wished I had addressed something right away, discussed it better, or even brought it up at all. But I think that's why God covers our stewardship with grace. When I fail to act or pray, I'm comforted that it's not about me being the perfect mom. It's recognizing that I need God's help to steward what He has given to me, and I just need to try to be faithful. There are two specific areas we have considered in stewarding our family, school and activities. It's not about choosing public, private, Christian, homeschool, neighborhood, or other. I have many homeschooling friends, and when I hear them talk about how they get to shepherd their kids all day, I am so humbled at their patience and sacrifice. Friends go to private schools, Christian schools, and other public schools, and I'm so blessed by their stories and know that they are a light where God has called them. Where God has called us is our neighborhood public school. A lot of it goes back to contentment and simplicity. God gave us a home in the neighborhood where we live and a school down the street so we can be thankful and know that He has chosen us to be lights in this specific community. On a very practical level, our distance from school has helped us steward time and energy. The short time it takes to get there frees up that time for something else. When we walk, it is a chance to talk with each other or chat with other families along the way. We have gotten to make friends through school, and since we're so close, our home can be open and available for both planned and spontaneous play dates. This has helped me steward the friendships we have. As an adult, I treasure the friendships I have with other ladies. When I think of my kids and their specific friendships, I think about how we can make time for friends, how we can encourage our friends, and how we can be generous with friends. Learning to be content where we are has helped us steward our home and time and provided opportunities for our kids to learn to love others. So activities. With five kids, there is definitely a juggling act when we think about activities and how we spend our time. It can be tempting to make having activities a priority over ministry and family time. There are so many things the kids show interest in, but we know that realistically we can't choose everything. Like their dad, our kids love soccer. One thing we try to watch for is the love of the sport becoming an idol for either our kids or ourselves. We try to model for the kids that sports is just one thing we can steward for God's glory. How we respect our coaches during practice, how we play the game, how we win or lose, how we treat our teammates, and how important we make the game can glorify God or not. In some seasons, it's not a matter of a right or a wrong choice, but simply wisdom about if it's good for our family. Right now, one team practices on Sundays, and while we don't have a scheduling conflict, we have decided to skip that practice so that Sundays can stay a family day. A few years ago, one of the kids got invited to play on a team that would continue into the spring, but that year we made the choice to say no. As we considered what it would mean to be on a team that cost more money, practice time, and games that were out of town, we thought that wasn't the best for us. This was actually a hard choice. I didn't grow up playing sports, but I always felt like I didn't want my inexperience to be the reason my kids didn't get involved or better. I thought about how if God has given them talent, should I be holding them back, or was I stewarding their gift wrong? But actually, it was Jared who decided that team wasn't the best for us at the time. And for me, it was good to practice submission even while I questioned a little. Over time, I saw the wisdom of that choice. The other kids were still so little and I saw that I couldn't have juggled that schedule joyfully. As we have added more sports over the years, we try to keep in mind the time commitment, the driving time, and the fact that one person's commitment affects everybody. So along with these big seasons of life, there's just daily life together as a family. For me, enjoying the time I have with my family reminds me to be thankful for each of them and to appreciate our time together. One way we steward our time is making specific time to have fun. There will always be the responsibilities of home, school, and work, and there's necessary diligence for those things. But we think it's equally important to have fun together. We try to make time to play games or find a show we all like on TV. We always go as a family to cheer on each kid's sports teams. Some of the kids started cooking, so letting them make breakfast or cooking pancakes together is fun. On weekends, we let the kids stay up late, watch a movie, or sleep over with each other. This one is hard, but we try to have one-on-one -on -one time with each other, starting with the parents. Jared and I love date nights with each other. 
But we also try to have one of us take the kids out individually for a special daddy-daughter or mommy-son date. Jared is so good about planning vacations and camping trips and making even packing and driving fun for us. Now we can't do this one all the time, but I will say that the kids will always remember the day they skipped school to play at Great Wolf Lodge. At the heart of the fun, we want our kids to know that we enjoy them and we are thankful and blessed to spend time together. So serving at home is where I am called to spend most of my time and energy in this season of life, but God has grown me in how to steward my time outside of ministry at home too. God has been teaching me that I need to pray for a right heart before deciding to commit to something for myself. I have said yes to things on a whim or just because it gets me out of the house. I have said yes to things that weren't bad, but maybe my motivation for doing them wasn't right. I'm humbled when I remember a time that Jared talked to me about this. He lovingly pointed out to me that every time I got busy with ministry or other things outside of home, our family felt neglected. Honestly, at first I felt pretty defensive about this. I felt discouraged that I couldn't handle serving both at home and outside. I think I even felt bitter that my responsibilities at home were just so much that I failed if I did anything else. It wasn't that God didn't want me to serve in children's ministry or invest in other ladies, but it was that I wasn't stewarding my time at home with a right heart. I'm learning to think through if a new commitment is something I can do for the right reasons and if I can continue to serve my family with joy. That being said, when I think of stewarding time to serve, it's been helpful to think about what ministries are a natural fit for the season of life I'm in right now. For many years, I was so blessed to be part of Lamplighters. There was childcare for my kids, and I learned so much from the teaching and sharing there. It wasn't a ministry that took time away from my family or required my husband to take care of the kids. It was God's way of giving me a place to have fellowship and serve outside home without it being a burden. Right now, my kids are school age and it has been great to serve together as a family. I still love teaching, so it's fun to help out with children's ministry and to include my kids in teaching the Bible stories. We've enjoyed hosting small group at our house, and the biggest blessing for me is seeing our kids really serve well. Not that there aren't complaints about cleaning up, but they like helping to set up and offer drinks, and they are happy to take care of younger kids. I've been so encouraged serving together as a family and seeing my kids grow and being helpful and kind. Stewarding family during this current season has been different and challenging. This was actually going to be the first year I had all five kids in school every day and I was looking forward to a few hours of freedom every day. If it were up to me, we would be going to school, playing sports, having play dates, and seeing friends at church. It's hard to think about stewarding the season with anything more than a survival mentality. So many days I find myself forgetting to pray for grace. I can feel my patience running thin by the minute, and I hope for an end to staying home. I have to remember Lamentations 3, 21 to 24. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. This season is another one planned by God and given to me by God, and I know that He will be faithful through it. I'm praying for all of us to hold on to the truth that there is grace enough to steward each day joyfully for God's glory.